Time blending is a technique in landscape photography where you take two or more images and you blend them together. Now think about this when we have wave formations where we have multiple different waves that are sweeping in and we want to capture that over the course of time. Or think about maybe a sunset or a sunrise where you like the color at a certain time, but the clouds aren't necessarily looking the best. You can use this one blend mode that I'm going to show you here to make amazing time blended images. So let's take this image for example. I'll show you the finished image that I've created here after all the work that I've done here. Made this beautiful sunset image, but there's a problem with this. The problem is that the sky that we see here is lighting up because the sun is actually over here and behind this range of trees. But at 540, it looked beautiful with the sun being cast across these rocks. So what I did was I stayed in one location and I had my tripod set there and I left that camera there for two hours. I photographed one set of images at 540 and another set of images at 740 when the sun set. So I had two hours in between where the sun was hitting these rocks beautifully and when I had my sunset. So here is the image. Here's the 740 image right here, the sunset. And here is the 540 image as the sun is going down past the clouds. Now we're going to use one blend mode to combine these together, but before we use that, I need to talk to you about what this blend mode is. This blend mode is actually called the light and blend mode. And what the light and blend mode does is it makes, it takes whatever is in the layer that you're telling it to be lightened and it's, it uses that data to apply it to the information below it. So how does that work? What we have here is we have pure black transitioning into pure white with our middle value in between. On top of that, we have a gradient fill layer. So this gradient fill layer, if I set this to the light and blend mode, you'll see almost a stair stepping action happening as it transitions from black to white. Now we've dropped out all of the black from this gradient. And what we've said is only allow this gradient to apply to the underlying layers if what's in this gradient is lighter than the colors or the tones underneath, okay? So that's important, especially with this image here, because when we turn this to the light and blend mode on this uh, image, the, the colors on these rocks are definitely lighter than the colors on these rocks at 740, 1740 and 1940 for you military folk. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to change this to the light and blend mode. And what you see is that now we've got the best of both worlds. We've got a beautiful light being cast across the background of the image here and also across the rocks. And if we need to, we can paint in what we need to paint in or paint out what we need to paint out. But it's easier if you just start with the light and blend mode and work from there. For instance, with this image, the sky is obviously going to take on some of the sky from this 540 image as well. So how do we get just the sky of that 740 image? Well, I'm going to click on this uh, 540 image, the image that was taken before with the lighter rocks, and I'm going to go to select and I'm going to go to sky. Now this is going to make the sky selection just for that sky, but what I need to do is I need to invert that. So I'm going to press control shift and I. Now when I press control shift I, it's going to invert the selection so that when I make the mask, I have everything but the sky selected. So now you see the best of both worlds. We've got the lighter color that's happening on the rocks, and we also have the beautiful sky from the sunset image that we had. So one might ask, is it really worth that effort? Well, let's go and look at our image here. This would be that sunset image without the glowing rocks that are happening right here. This is the sunset image that we have with the beautiful light that's happening on the rocks that matches the beautiful light that's happening in the background or the sky of the image. And all of this is happening very easily with just the light and blend mode and a simple mask. So the big question is though, how do you get these things to line up to be so perfect like that? In the next example, you're gonna see how I do that. So what I have here are four raw files that I'm going to drag and drop and put right into Adobe Camera Raw. Now these are raw files of various waves in Acadia National Park. And what you're, what I wanna do here is I wanna take the best of all of these wave shots and combine them together. I really like what's going on with this wave creeping up over here. I like some of the formations of the waves that are happening over here. And I like the formation of the waves happening back here on this one. And I also like how the waves are crashing up on this one. Now, in order for this to work properly, you need to make sure that you edit the image exactly the same way. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all four of these exposures and I'm just going to click on this top one that's already been edited, press and hold shift and then click on the bottom one. I'm going to right click and say sync settings. Now what you're going to see here is that in those images, I also corrected the horizon line on the first image. So I need to do that with all of them. Where is that actually kept? It's kept in the crop section. So I'm going to make sure that the crop section here is clicked as well so that when this image syncs with all of these, it gets all of the same stuff. All three of these images get the same stuff as this top one. That is going to make this so much easier. So you want to make sure that all four of these images or all the images that you're using for your time blend are edited in the exact same way. So once we press OK, all of these images should now, as I click on them, be very close to one another, if not the exact same. So some of these are slightly different when it comes to uh, the exposure on the image. So I might drop them just a little bit so it's not quite as bright and drop this one just a little bit so it's not quite as bright. So it kind of matches the darkness that's happening in these images. Or maybe this one needs to be brightened up a slight bit. Okay, that'll be fine just like that. What we need to basically keep an eye on here is what we're using as our base image. So if our base image is essentially lighter than some of the darker images, then we're going to be OK anyway, because we're only taking the lighter values of these images anyway. Now, once these are all edited, I'm just going to press done. I'm not going to say open. I'm going to press done. OK, now I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to scripts and then I'm going to go where it says load files into stack. So now I need to browse for where those files are. So I'm going to go ahead and press browse. I'm going to click on them. I already have them pre-selected here, but you might need to navigate to where they are. So just go ahead and click on all of them and then press OK. That'll load those files into this area. What we're also going to do is say attempt to automatically align those source images as well. It might not work out the best, but we're going to try it. And then we'll press OK. Now what Photoshop is going to do is it's going to open up all of those raw files into Photoshop and it's going to automatically stack them on top of each other. There are other ways to do this manually. Uh, we'll see how well Photoshop does this. So now with all of these stacked on top of each other, like I said, there are ways that you can do this yourself manually, but we're going to see if Photoshop did a good job of stacking. So the way we figure out how Photoshop did a good job of stacking is we turn all of them off, turn the previews on all of them off first. You can see that one of these images clearly is cropped a little bit differently than the other ones because of the uh, amount of data we have on the sides. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the preview on on this one, click on this image, and then go to the difference blend mode. Now, the way you'll know how they, they've combined is if prominent details that have remained stagnant throughout the image are black. What that would be in this image would be the things like the rocks and the lighthouse. Those are stagnant. They remain the same. What's moving is the water. So if there's a misalignment here, it'll look like this. I'll just move that just a little bit. I'll nudge it. It'll look like that or maybe even like this. OK, the difference blend mode we can use to help us align that. So we can even nudge these if we need to with the arrow keys as we move around the image with the arrow keys to get them aligned. Now, that looks like it did a pretty good job with that one. Let's see if it did it with another one. So if, if we're using this bottom one as our base image, we want to use these images to compare. So we'll go ahead and put the difference blend mode on here. Looks like it's pretty good on this one as well. OK, so I'll turn the difference blend mode on that off. I turn it to dissolve, so normal. And then we'll turn this one on and we'll see if this one did a good job of that as well. And it looks like all of them did a pretty darn good job. So they're all aligned pretty well. We don't need to worry about that. Sometimes it doesn't always work out so well. So now all we need to do is turn on this image and change it to the light and blend mode. OK, so we got it aligned. Everything's good to go. When we turn the light and blend mode on, you can see that it only puts in the water there because that's the lightest portion of this image that's being applied to the image below it. Click on this one, light and blend mode. Look at that. OK, now this one has some people back there, so we might need to mask that out. And then this one we will change that to the light and blend mode as well and see what that produces for us. OK, so it looks like we have a lot of really interesting wave action happening here, creeping up in and splashing up against uh, the rocks there. Now, what we would do here is just make a mask and brush out the things that we don't want in the image, like these individuals back here. I'm going to go ahead and change my brush over and brush that out. OK, and then put a mask on this image and then brush them out back there as well. I've got some spots uh, that some sensor dust spots. I could fix those as well uh, later. 
And after you have them stacked and you put them all in the light and blend mode, you got your masks. You can mask individual areas out or you can just start turning these layers on and off to see which ones are making the best look for you. For instance, this image I don't really think is working out very well, even though I like some of the wave structure that's happening with this one uh, off the coast here. I don't like how it's overlapping on top of that yellow that's happening in the water there, which happens to be the rocks that are underneath. So I might just turn that one off. I don't necessarily need it. I thought I would need four, but I don't. I kind of like the look that I have here. So then all we have to do with this one, press C for the crop tool on this, C for the crop tool. And then we're going to alt or option while pressing and holding shift to go in from the middle and then crop it so that we get all of that excess stuff off that didn't necessarily align very well. And here is where at, at the end of the day here, I would just build up after this and do all of my work on top of this layer after all of them have been combined. I would continue to work on this image to get this to be where I'd want it to be. So the question is, does the light and blend mode then work for every time blended type of image? Not necessarily. It might. You can try it. Uh, it just helps alleviate some of the masking you're going to have to do. It's definitely going to work for, like you saw with that sunset image, it's definitely going to work for things like waves. And it will also work with things like clouds because of the white clouds being lighter from image to image. If you like this tutorial and like to watch more Photoshop tips and tricks, this playlist is full of them. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take very difficult tasks in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple, like you saw here with the light and blend mode. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.